bit quicker, but the former Republican Senator John Kyle is in the news. It's an interesting story because they, they brought in John Kyle at Facebook and had him lead an audit into bias, and he found that there was, quote, significant work that needed to be done to ease the concerns of conservatives who have accused Facebook of, of not uh, acknowledging bias in the audit. And then you got liberals coming out and saying they're upset Facebook even did an audit like this. RNC committee woman of California, R.B. Dillon, joins us. I know you've been very vocal in similar cases in the past, but what did you make of this one, what Senator Kyle was involved in? Well, I think it doesn't go far enough. I think it's actually a fairly shallow effort and more designed to placate conservatives than to actually acknowledge and address the issues that are rampant in Facebook's content moderation, in its ad filtering, in its uh, suspending of people with vague policies and inequitable application of those rules, right. in its human resources across the board and so I don't think it does much of anything. How do you solve an issue like this? So the main thing, one of the main things it seems to me is how, how you define what's inappropriate. Many times it comes up in hate speech and you know something that well, one group might see as a political statement is seen by other people as quote unquote hate speech. How do we get to a point where we have appropriate definitions of what really should be, be banned on some of these platforms? Well, I don't think it's that hard. I think it requires honesty and decency, and it requires transparency. None of those things are present here. For example, simply hiring a former a senator who's now a lobbyist to have his law firm interview a bunch of people over a, over you know several months and then mm -hmm. make a report about it, it doesn't do anything. What Facebook needs to do is acknowledge that 90% plus of its employees who apply these rules are biased, that the rules are vague, vague and biased, that the rules have been applied inequitably against conservatives, and that as a result of this vagueness and inequitable kind of regime, people are censoring themselves and the quality of their Facebook experience is really decreased as well as the transparency of everything that they do and that's unattractive from a product point of view but from a point of view of speech and regulation I think it really gives the impression to conservatives that right. they're being discriminated against and that's that's and that remains so after this fairly shallow whitewash report in Facebook clearly sees it as an issue otherwise they wouldn't even have a report like this but your point is they're just trying to get some better PR and and make it look better that's and make right. it look like they care we're not going to be fooled by this. What they need to do is name the problem, acknowledge it, and take steps to resolve it rather than throw a report at it. Nobody is being fooled by this. What's a step? What's a step that could resolve it? Uh, they should have transparency around who they ban and why so that people can study that and comment on it. They don't have that right now. They should have clear rules. So one of the things that this report identified, which is a very obvious problem, is that they forced nonprofits to describe themselves as political entities in order to run ads, which, which jeopardizes their nonprofit status. Hmm. Now, they claim they've changed that, but they keep changing the rules right before an election, right before somebody wants to buy ads. And it's always conservatives right. who seem to be banned, pro-life groups. On your heartbeat, we knew the president's comments.